Welcome back, Zero K fans, to more Nano Lays at Dawn. I remain your host, Chad, if you're a 333, and we're back with another match, this time North Chilean G versus RAR on Red Comet. Now, for those of you not familiar, RAR is the commander player. They pretty much just do commander stuff. They upgrade their commander, put on a couple of riot units. In this case, it would probably be the ogres, which are what warriors are called now, and, or at least that's how we're called, what they're called now. Reaver! They're called Reaver. Which one's Ogre, then? Eh, fair enough. Okay, the, the Reaver, not the Ogre. Gotta figure out who the Ogre is. Whatever. Reavers! A couple of those on top of their commander. And already they're upgrading the commander. North Chilean G, on the other hand, much more conservative player and currently going for tanks as well, which is also a very common choice in this map. Generally speaking, Red Comet, you go for Rovers or tanks. Rovers being the new name for late vehicles. Again, I'm gonna keep going on that until probably December. And then, yeah, so rovers of tanks use that because the map is super flat. It's it's a big flat red plane. I think it's supposed to be on Mars. Anyway, the the point is great for this map because of the size. Colloquiebot Factory has a bit of room to maneuver because they are fairly quick. At least the glaives are fairly quick. But otherwise, it's going to be a bit difficult for RAR. And given the way RAR plays. That's not what they care about. They generally go in, they want to have the commander push in with a few troops, and it'll just be a slow push across the map. Or reasonably slow. Not a whole lot of turrets, just the pushing. It takes a while to walk across this map. So I expect North Chilean G is going to be doing a lot more expanding early on than RAR. Like, RAR is going to get some in in order to support their commander, but they're not going to be building as much of an army, just enough to defend keep themselves alive. North Chilean G, on the other hand, expanding both north and south simultaneously, which that's what you do. And that'll be... That'll be a thing that'll come up in about five minutes. Like, that's when we'll really see the fruits of the difference in expansion patterns. Because there is nothing coming up for RAR worker-wise. And nothing up for RAR worker-wise. They are trying to do their best to get rid of the welders, and they... M Ooh, that was close. Don't quite manage to do it, though. And at this point, with the Kodachi's helping out, there's no easy way that Rar is going to be able to get in there and actually deal enough damage to get rid of the welders. So, North Chilean G in a reasonably safe position right now. Still, though, it's possibly a problem. Oh, you know what? I think I know who the Ogre is. It is the Banisher! That's what I'm thinking of. Okay, so the name is correct in this match, presumably at some point. Just not right now. But yeah, here is Rar getting the Reaver up. They're getting ready. They're going, to, they're going to be going for that fairly soon. The commander's at level 3 so far. Focused on Heat Ray, primarily. So it wants to be short range. And that is not a bad choice. I mean, considering that they're already going in... Actually, well, is it a bad choice? Not a terrible choice. Not a choice I would necessarily go for, though. I wouldn't have thought of going for that, because the thing with the Heat Ray is that you are forced to move in if you want to deal lots of damage. But the idea with Rar's commander is always just to tank everything and push in. I'm curious if he gets rocket launchers or missile launchers or something afterwards, because that's what I would go for, but I'm not RAR. And RAR knows their commanders. So I'll defer to them on that one. Heat Ray still does deal a decent amount of damage. It's... it's not a bad choice. Anyway, North Chilean G, as mentioned, expanding fairly quickly, already one and a half times RAR's economy, as RAR just now getting their first Conjurer. Like I said, this is kind of difficult, not to mention they've been losing metal extractors in the process. Not as many raids have been successful for RAR as North Chilean G. Actually, now North Chilean G was a bit of reclaim to help themselves get even further, at least temporarily, but static economy is the big di difference right now. And North Chilean G making sure to deal with their energy deficit before they start accessing. It's cutting it close, but they should barely manage it. They'll probably excess maybe 100 metal, at most. But for now... Really, it's just, just North Chilean G's economy is far more effective. Their their attrition is far more pro is far more promising. They're in an extremely strong position, especially with that first reaver going down. I am actually a bit surprised that happened. Is that Oh, that's why. There's a rally point. That explains it. Because there had to be a rally point. Like I said, the way that Rar tends to play this, it would make more sense for these Reavers to start just guarding the commander. Because that's how he usually does it. Is Reavers or Thugs. They just... They go into the commander, latch onto it, never let go, and that's how they keep in the game. And it's quite effective, too. But if the Reavers die, that's not going to work. 
And at the same time, like I said, North Chilean G is very rapidly expanding across the map. Already got in the northwest corner. South side pretty much completely taken. And RAR expanding more slowly, still expanding, over the north side of the map. And again, more, more of everything. Getting the rocket launcher, that's what I expected. Heat Ray and Rocket Launcher, that is a good combination. You have the Rocket Launcher for the longer range stuff against lower opponents. Heat Ray if things try to come in close. Of course, speaking of coming in close, this is exactly what these Blitzes and Kodachi are trying to do. The Faraday will cause some problems, but North Chilean G at least knows what's there. That's more the key thing. They know RAR's expanding north. They know they have to deal with this stuff. They might have an inkling that RAR's commander is over there, and I think they have radar coverage of this as well. Yes, they do. They know exactly what's going on. Rar's commander's coming in here, and it could be on a suicide mission. All things considered, there is no support. There are blitzes in here, right ready just to get rid of the commander whenever they like. There's, I mean, five of them so far. Six of them, never mind. Sorry, six plus... Yeah, six is being built. Five plus Kodachi, currently on the field. This is not going to be a problem whatsoever. Rar's commander, essentially just fighting for their life in the middle of the enemy back line with no additional support. Being able to get rid of one of the blitzes, but that's not enough. And at this point, their commander pretty much just locked out and dead. And RAR being as far back economically as they are, they're going to have a very difficult time recovering from this, if they're going to recover at all. This could be GG. This could be it. A couple of the blitzes go down in the death explosion, but that does not matter at this point. When you're fighting RAR and you kill their commander, you have done a wonderful service to yourself. It pretty much doesn't matter what you have die in the process of doing that you've probably put yourself in a massive advantage. As we see, North Chilean G has. They have pretty much half the map. These metal extractors haven't been taken yet, but North Chilean G just has to send a worker there. North Chilean G owns them. RAR at this point, I mean, I appreciate the counterattack. It's good that they're going for this. They're making sure just to take as much of the advantage North Chilean G has away from them. And at this point, I mean, we do see that not a whole lot has been... Oops. What is going on? I'll have one. Now oh, fine. We do see at this point that the metal used is fairly low. Or, sorry, the difference in metal used is fairly low. North Chilean G, a little bit more efficient with their metal, but not by much. The excess has worked out to about 2,000 metals so far. So despite North Chilean G's massive metal advantage, they actually have only got 700 units worth of metal advantage. Mind you, plus 1,200 metal worth of damage. So RAR's counterattack could actually be the thing that breaks North Chilean G. They don't have as much that's being used. They don't have the energy to work with this, especially having lost a lot of the power infrastructure just then. But they didn't have much power infrastructure on top of that, so RAR has a chance. RAR could easily come back here. It's just a matter of whether or not they're able to pull that off. They'd have to be able to get in there and actually deal with these blitzes. And the Reavers are doing a decent job doing so, but the problem is that there's just so much firepower coming in here that's EMPing everything. Not a whole lot can answer to it. I mean, with the Cloakybot Factory... I'm not even sure what you could use to answer to it offhand without just numbers. Like, sheer numbers. Bearing in mind, Reavers cost a little bit less than Blitzes. And they were doing a fine job. So if you had three or four of them that were spread out enough they didn't all get EMP'd at once, I could see that working. That being said, though, North Chilean G, if they get their power back up, and they are getting their power up, they should be able to start building enough on top of the Caretakers that they should be able to get that economic advantage to work in their favor. And even then, despite the excess... There is still more than enough metal destroyed, or more than enough difference in metal destroyed, that North Chilean G remains at an advantage. Although, RAR, this is exactly what I mean. Enough reverse, you get rid of the blitzes, that opens things up a bit. North Chilean G, right now, they don't have a whole lot of units in play. They're getting a Minotaur that was the old Reaper, but now it's Minotaur. They're getting one of those up, and that's actually possibly a little risky. Minotaurs have a very slow fire rate. It's easy to get units around them and easy to get units to just push in. You might lose one or two, but with this kind of army, they could easily get in there and make the Minotaur's day very miserable and very short. However, the commander is clearly the target. Rar wants the commander dead and wants them dead now. And they can make that work as well. I mean, at this point, North Chilean G is only able to produce as much as Rar, thanks to the power output there's really no massive economic difference between them. And now RAR's evened out the unit difference, mostly by taking out economic infrastructure, but that's even bigger. The amount of metal destroyed is giving RAR a massive advantage. And that's going to be possibly it. Turning it around, this is a great recovery from RAR. Losing their commander, and as mentioned before, RAR is known for being a commander-based player. 
That is their style. They upgrade that commander, they push it, they do everything they can, but it almost feels like they've decided to change around from that. Like, they have it there because that's still their thing, but they're not as reliant on it. On the other hand, though, they are able to take advantage greatly of the fact that North Chilean G's power infrastructure was nowhere near as big as, it, as its metal infrastructure, and that was the thing. Because the metal infrastructure for North Chilean G grew rapidly, and they couldn't use it. That gave Rar the opening they needed to take all this territory back, or at least to break the territory. They haven't taken any of it yet. They're still working on it. They're getting a few constructors here and there, which they need to do. Also, it occurs to me, they don't have any storage yet. They... They're accessing loads just thanks to the lack of storage, despite the fact that they are building fairly quickly and managing to use their economy reasonably well. They can't deal with any excess. At this point, I think it's actually... Okay, seriously? <sighs> okay, sorry about that. There was a crash. I don't know why. I think... Okay, so there's a crash if I hit Alt-F1. That's the hotkey for showing the graphs. And I don't know why it crashes when I use that. So, my apologies. I, once again, will just bring it back up to before. If I click the button, it's fine. Clicking the button doesn't cause any problems, but for whatever reason, that is the only thing that doesn't cause problems. It's kind of silly. I mean, maybe I've got something misconfigured. That was kind of a bad time, too, because that was a that was RAR really making their comeback, getting back in there. I mean, like I said, RAR is... RAR is a strong player who can get a little bit cocky with their commander, as we saw there. But it's good to know that they've been practicing their non-commander play, because, I mean, a year ago, they would have just walked in with a commander fully upgraded with Warriors at the time in tow, Reavers now, and that would have been it. Or Thugs. That would have been their entire game plan. Just push in, hope for the best. It wasn't entirely ineffective. It worked from time to time, especially with the level 7, level 8 commander. But clearly, they've moved away from that to some extent. They still want their commander to be their frontliner, but they have a plan if their commander dies. I'm glad for that. I'm really glad to see that that is a, an adjustment they've made. Because that was a thing that I always found they... Like, I knew they'd be able to do well if they had that in their back pocket. I mean, North Chilean G is no slouch. Like, there's... I can't really emphasize that. There is nothing wrong about the fact that North Chilean G did not completely take that game. No slight on them. But at any rate, we are back in the game. We can get back into getting this match going, and... Yeah, at this point, North Chilean G is... Oops. Get into it going, if I can actually get the audio on it. Yeah, so North Chilean G, I still think they're in a fairly strong position territorially. Basically, if they're able to break Rar's army at this point, there is a good chance they'll be able to get back in here and take this match. It's not going to be easy, and at this point, Rar does have a massive advantage in terms of metal destroyed. But... At the same time, North Chilean G does have a lot of territory to work with. They can easily get back these metal extractors into a relatively solid base. And they do have a reasonably strong army coming up. I mean, they do have the Minotaur up, which admittedly is a lot of power in one point, and I mentioned before that can be easily surrounded, but it's supported. Whether that support actually holds out, though, I'm not sure, and North Chilean G wisely retreating. This is likely not a good time to go for it yet. With a bit more support, I could see this working. But the Blitzes need to regroup. Everything needs to regroup. It's going to be a game of positioning right now. That's what it's going to come down to, and North Chilean G knows it. That's also a matter of rebuilding, as North Chilean G focused way more on the power infrastructure than metal, and for good reason. But once they get that set up, they should be fine. I mean, now North Chilean G is in the position that RAR was in, where, you know, loads of metal... Sorry, RAR is the position North Chilean G was in. Loads of metal, not a lot of energy, not a lot of easy ways to deal with that. Unfortunately, with the energy being on the front line used as walls, it's not giving a huge amount of room for North Chilean G to, to get hit. At the same time, though, it does work well as a wall, distracting Rar's forces and giving North Chilean G some room to get a bit of headway in here. Because if it weren't for that, boy, North Chilean G's armor would have been in trouble. But because of that little, that little wall, that position there, the cover 
that North Chalangi's army had, RAR is not going to be just steamrolling. And of course, with all those power plants being built in the back lines, North Chalangi's power infrastructure should be solid from here on out. I would kind of hope they realize there is a slightly under construction caretaker here to actually deal with, mind you. But, you know, once that's dealt with, and there's a bit more build power in play for North Chilean G, it should be fine. At the same time, RAR only putting 15 build power into their factory. 10 now, they just moved away from that as well. Focusing way more again the power power infrastructure up, which they should be doing. But once that... Uh, actually, never mind. They got that in there. That should be 25 build power coming into the factory. That's pretty good. And the caretaker being finished. So North Chilean G will be able to get their production up faster. But of course, it's tank factory. Production is only part of the it's only part of the story. The other part of the story is maintaining existing units. Not something RAR is gonna worry about as much. Cloakbot factory is typically cheaper, more expendable units. You don't worry about repairing them. You generally just send them in, do as much damage as you can, get the value, and then bring in new reinforcements later on. With tanks though, this thing costs 850 metal. Like that's the cost of about four of these reavers. And that's just one unit. But it's also 7,000 HP. See, so you, you're a bit more motivated to keep them in play and keep them alive. That's the repairs. Though we aren't seeing a whole lot of that. We are, in fact, seeing a rather daring infiltration mission coming in here from North Chilean G to tear apart RAR's economy. And it's not a bad option either. RAR still doesn't have a whole lot to work with. Most of their army is on the front lines trying to raid North Chilean G. And this ogre here doing a fine job making sure that that is not as effective as RAR would like. I mean, ideally, in North Chilean G's case, not effective at all. And that could actually happen, come to think of it. I mean, if you look at the way that the the Reavers are positioned right now, there's three Ogres here. They should be able to smack the center of that and just splash damage the rest of them down. And that's exactly what happens. The Reavers dealing almost no damage whatsoever with this continuous barrage of rockets coming out from the Ogres. That was a really convenient set of timing there. Just to keep those Reavers under pressure. Only losing one Metal Extractor and I think one Blitz in the process. Great value from North Chilean G. RAR is still having the value advantage, especially if this Minotaur goes down, which it looks like it will. But it's hard to say that, that those numbers are the key value anymore. It's clearly coming down more to the actual positioning than it is anything else. Oh, sorry. Blitz is the new Panther. That's the new name for a Panther. I should point that out as well because we are still in the name transition phase. Blitz. Used to be called Panther. Now it's called Blitz. Same with Ogre. Used to be called Banisher. Now it's called Ogre. And Rocco is named Ronin. Not Hokomoko. Although, I'm sure when Hokomoko watches this, you'll get a kick out of that. Orphelius, Orphelius thinking the Rocco is named after them. Or should be. But, speaking of Roccos, or Ronins now, over to the north side, a little bit of harassment. These power, This power structure is actually quite a bit at risk. I mean, the thing is, the welder here, not on priority. It's not getting a whole lot of money to itself, thanks to the metal having been damaged earlier on, so... North Chilean G could lose a lot of their power infrastructure over to the north side. Two blitzes coming up north to try to deal with this, and good for good thing that they are, too. Because at the same time, North Chilean G going for the major assault with the ogres and the blitzes. This should actually work. Mostly thanks to the ogres. But even if these reavers come in here, if the reavers and ronins come in here at the south, the ogres should have no problem dealing with them. Bit of a shame the blitzes are gone, though, but there's more reinforcements coming in. North Chilean G is on top of this. Not to mention the north side has also been completely defended. So overall, North Chilean G is still in a strong position. Looking at the map on the whole, they've taken some damage. They've lost some units. This one Ronin is being a bit of a pain in the butt. But regardless, North Chilean G has still maintained a territory advantage, maintained an economic advantage, or at least turned the economic advantage they have into a proper production advantage. And actually doing a fine enough job keeping alive. The Nimbus here providing a problem. New name for Brawler is now Nimbus. That is being a problem. Are there any... Is the... Well, Flak... Etten, that's what it's called. The Etten is the new Flak cannon tank. And they are coming up. That's exactly what... I mean, exactly what I expect from North Chilean G. RAR is going heavy on the Nimbuses. I want to say Brawlers. It's not Brawler anymore. Heavy on the Nimbuses. So you bring in an Etten. Bring in a giant two-headed ogre. I believe that's what the name origin is. Actually, that's kind of appropriate, too, considering, you know, the double, the twin barrels in that thing. And the separation of them as well. Of course, the problem is getting it into position. What is the range of this thing, by the way? Ah, okay, cool. So it's definitely in range. 
And on top of that, ooh. And the Blitz has hit the air as well, so at least there is something to chase away the Nimbus. Chase the clouds away and keep the skies clear. I mean, personally, I prefer accumulating Nimbus, but... I mean, in either case, you don't want it to rain on your parade if you can avoid it if you're North Chilean G, and... Rar being forced back. As a result. So with that, North Chilean G has pretty much secured the northern side. There's not a whole lot of forces coming in to try to deal with this. I mean, the Nimbus is... They're gonna be... They're swarming around. They're gonna make life miserable as best they can. But... There's only so much they can really do. If there's Ettons going around with the army, and there are... Not a whole lot of options. The only thing, though, is that there's no ogres. All the ogres have died. They all got killed up front, so there's not a whole lot left to deal with this front army. Roar's army could manage to get in some mileage, even though a good flank coming in from North Chilean G, a great flank coming from North Chilean G, in fact. But even then, the Reavers are just too much firepower, and those are, that's both, at, well, two of the three Ettons down. Two more are, sorry, two of the four Ettons down. Production, however, is continuing to place on them, so it's not completely the end of the world. The problem is, nothing is here to stop these Reavers. And I don't see any more Ogres in production for a little while. They're there, but it's not after several Blitzes and quite a few more Welders. So, unless North Shore LNG changes their production line, they are going to be on the back foot for a little while, keeping their defenses up, trying desperately to stay alive. And that timing could actually provide the opportunity needed for RAR to get in and completely wreck face. There is nothing to really defend, the north side's open, RAR knows it, and is going for it. And the south side as well, just to keep the distraction up. At this point, RAR hitting North Chilean G on both sides, and North Chilean G without the forces to really deal with this. Going for the Ogres, still getting the Welder up. I don't agree with even having the Welder up. I feel like they just need to have the Ogre ASAP. But this is still going to be reasonably quick. Actually, come to think of it, the defense on the south side is the only one that's relevant. The north side is not being attacked very much. Just one Reaver coming in there, expecting no defenses, and indeed finding none. Not the worst idea in the world, but that does mean the North Chilean G just has to deal with the south side, and then they've, again, torn apart most of Rar's army. But once again... At this point, the metal value is quite separate, and if we look at the amount of metal used, well, it's... North Chilean G finally getting some advantage. 4,000 metal advantage, but a 9,000 metal discrepancy between RAR and North Chilean G for destroyed units. So at this point, total unit value is still in RAR's favor. And on top of that, the Nemesis are fully healed. Not to mention, more coming... Ooh, a crow! Why not?! <laughs> If Rar likes anything, it's single massive units that can deal immense amount of damage. It may not be a commander, but it's going to be something. In this case, it's going to be a crow. I don't know if that's even going to be relevant, because the question is whether the game actually lasts long enough. And at this point, North Chilean G is having a difficult time maintaining their army. Rar can easily come in here. It's kind of unfortunate North Chilean G lost those ogres. That, to me, was the big problem. I mean, it was the early problem of the fact that they didn't use that much metal early on. They were on par with RAR, despite having way more metal production. Right, the metal income generally had the advantage, but it wasn't used. Their excess got fairly high. But the problem, of course, ultimately was that RAR, after losing their commander, came in with a lot of Reavers, and those Reavers did a wonderful job maintaining RAR's position until they managed to push in. Until they got the gunships up, got the Nimbus up, just that little extra support, but mostly it was the Reavers. The Reavers did almost all this work. And three ogres, definitely enough to deal with them. But after North Chilean G lost them, I didn't see them being rebuilt quickly enough. They were on the table. Given enough time, North Chilean G would have had the forces to deal with this, but Rar struck while the iron was hot and made that a sure victory. But anyway, that is that game. And we have one more game tonight. It is going to be a game between Eikens and Dynfreund on Lonely Oasis. So stay tuned for that. It'll be up in a couple minutes.